Tonight on Children's Hospital, four-year-old Reuben fights for his life. It's just awful, you feel so helpless. Seven-year-old Jack hopes he doesn't need another operation. I might be going to theatre, but I hope I don't. Yes, sir. And a nasty cut on the knee for 12-year-old Jordan. The Royal Manchester Children's Hospital is now the biggest and most up-to-date hospital for children in the UK. Packed with state-of-the-art equipment, its thousand-strong team of medical professionals treat over 100,000 patients a year in a building the size of 39 football pitches, working together 24-7 to improve the lives of children when they need it most. The hospital's intensive care unit is the largest of its kind in the UK. This is where children with the most life-threatening conditions are treated. Today, a boy from Blackpool with a mystery illness is fighting for his life. Five days ago, Reuben was a perfectly healthy four-year-old until his body suddenly started shutting down. His fingers went blue and he fell asleep on the sofa and he was shivering, his temperature was up. I called the doctors and she said, it's an emergency, you need to get him to hospital, you need to call 999. And I decided to put him on a ventilator and get him here, really. Reuben's heart is failing, but doctors don't know why. The intensive care team is led by Dr Peter Mark Fortune, who's worked in paediatric medicine for the past 18 years. He's pooling all the hospital's resources to try to find out what's wrong with Reuben. When you get a problem like Reuben has with his heart, we tick off and go through every single thing that, that it could possibly be. And working closely with our colleagues who are the cardiac specialists, um, we, we basically we send a huge battery of tests off. Some of the very common stuff is all proven to be negative so far, um, but over a period of time there are a number of much less common things that will trickle back in and might just give us the answer. But for Reuben's mum and dad, the wait for test results is agonising. It's so scary, isn't it? It's really scary. Just not knowing what's wrong with him. We'd feel helpless not being able to do anything for him. So it doesn't like it's infected, that's where um, it's started, like that. It looks pretty clear to me. Right. Right, uh, Diseases like meningitis, pneumonia and swine flu have all been ruled out. So it's not you tell me them. I've sat down and I've chatted to Reuben's mum and dad and they're completely understandably devastated and terrified. Unfortunately, the one question you can never answer, really for most of the children that we see on intensive care, is I can't say 100% I'm sure I'm going to send uh, your young man back out of the hospital completely back in the shape he was before he came in. I can sit there for so long and then I think, I'm going to have to go and I need to walk out. It's just awful, you feel so helpless. I get upset thinking about it. Reuben will be kept sedated while the intensive care team use the very latest technology and 24-hour one-on-one care to keep him alive. For now, all his parents can do is hope and wait. On the hospital's kidney dialysis ward, seven-year-old Jack Norfolk is being weighed. It's a routine he goes through three times a week. Oh, that's nice. What was nice? Me itch. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. I would have liked a good splotch. He comes in with his mum, Jenny, to be treated for a range of medical problems. He's got no kidneys, diabetes, a short stature and poor eyesight. I think the one who gets down in the dumps with it is me. He's the one who keeps me smiling and keeps me going. Because it has been quite intense since he was born. Hello. Hiya. You all right? You causing trouble? No. Yeah. Come on, guys. It's not as if he's coming in for painful treatment. He just wants to come in to have a chat with everyone. Hello, Jack. Hi, Hello. Mom. Today, Jack's in a wheelchair, but he hopes it won't be for long. He's recovering after an operation to rebuild his hip, which was damaged by bone disease. Come on. 
X-rays will show if the operation has been successful. What we need to do is lay you down on there, Jack. Senior radiographer Christine Layton has X-rayed Jack many times before, and she always looks forward to his visits. When can I say cheese? In a minute. We'll tell you when. Ready? One, two, three. Say cheese for me. Cheese. Excellent. Okay. That's that pin that they've put in your leg, isn't well, it? Well, that's weird. Well, weird. Have you never seen it before? No. Oh, so weird. <laughs> Metal Mickey? Whoa! This is the His pain. hip bone was broken and rebuilt using metal rods. Do you think the doctor will like those pictures? No, I do. You better have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, See thank you. you. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Since the operation, Jack's been having physio to help him walk, but he's not allowed to put too much weight on his leg until the x ray results are in. Oh, can't go anymore. I need a rest. Jack's been under the care of consultant orthopaedic surgeon Andrew Henry for the past three months. Mr Henry carried out Jack's operation eight weeks ago. Today he needs to decide if Jack's any closer to walking properly. When I was putting some of the screws in, it, it really, they really gripped, which means that the metalwork has a good hold on his bone, which uh, if it doesn't, then you have to rest and not let them wait there. But uh, he's doing fine. So what, are you hiding down there? Can we, have a, can we have a little look at the operation? It's good news for Jack and his mum. The bones are healing in the right place and he should be able to start walking on the leg in a few weeks. Yeah, that's my foot you're putting your thingy on. I just want to see him walk again, unaided, you know, without his frame, because I forget what it's like for Jack to be walking around because he was always on his feet running around. Say so thank you to Mr Henry. <coughs> without the see tissue. You. It's OK. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> but unfortunately for Jack, his time in hospital is far from over. He'll be back in a few days to find out if he'll have yet another operation, this time on his eyes. In A&E, staff know how scary a trip to hospital can be. Professor Simon Carley has 16 years experience of working with children and he's got a knack of knowing what patients and parents are going through. 12-year-old Jordan's arrived after cutting himself in the park. I'm guessing, I might be wrong, but I think you've hurt your leg. What have you been up to? Just sliding on the ice. Oh, right, OK. It's uh, quite a nice little cut there, isn't it? Just slipped and landed on a piece of glass. Oh, right, so this is actually glass as well? Yeah, but no, it wasn't quite eating anything. Ah, sliding down the hill, it's really steep. So, in the walls a lot, aren't you? Can you tell me if it's too sore? The cut's deep, but Jordan's putting on a very brave face. Just another day, is it, mate? Yeah. I've got to say, mate, probably going to have to put some stitches in there. You're not bothered? Fantastic. I think he's got quite a lot of pain, but he's just being very, very brave. Although the words coming out of his mouth are essentially, it's fine, I've got no pain, it doesn't hurt, you kind of get used to just watching the face because the face tells you a lot more about how much more pain they've got. Jordan needs to go for an x-ray to see if his knee is broken and if there's any glass left in the wound. It may need deep cleaning as well as stitching. After half an hour and one x-ray, Jordan's back. What I'm going to do is just have a quick look at your x-ray now and just make sure there's nothing on the inside. That's your kneecap there. So that one looks OK and in particular, there's no extra bits in here, so I don't think there's any glass in there. It's good news for Jordan, but the wound needs a good clean before it's stitched. Okay, is that still a little bit sore? Yeah. Is that right? So, is that sore? It is, isn't it? An anaesthetic gel has numbed some of the knee, but Professor Carly's giving Jordan an injection of painkiller just to make sure. Hold on. Feel that? Yeah. There isn't a lot of padding around the kneecap, so you, you're down onto bone pretty quick. And that's why you've just got to be careful, and even on the x-ray you can sometimes miss a fracture. You can actually see it's gone right through the skin, and then it's down right onto the kneecap. That's actually the front of the kneecap that we can see at the bottom there. But that looks, that looks fine, actually. So what we'll do is just pop a couple of stitches in, get you back to normal. So, a couple of little stitches in here, mate. With a clean wound and some effective pain relief, Jordan can start to relax. That's the most important one, number one. 
straight home, Facebook, and then bed. There you go, Jordan. Stick that on your profile, so gone to the local anaesthetics in and it started to work. He's smiley, he's happy, he's easy to distract, he's interactive, he's not focusing on the knee, just a happier kid. No, I'll say don't come back, but I've got a feeling you'll be back soon. I'll be back in about a week or two. I'm going to shake this Dr Zanthus, looking Thank after you. you. See you, mate. Have a good one. Thanks a lot. Ta-da. He seems to have gone out with relatively little pain. He's walked out there, so quite happy with that. Royal Manchester Children's Hospital has the largest general intensive care unit for kids in the country. A rotating staff of 150 specialist practitioners provide round-the-clock, one-on-one care for children up to the age of 16. Four-year-old Reuben is dangerously ill with a mystery illness. For the past five days, he's been kept alive by machines while his devastated parents anxiously wait for a diagnosis. We couldn't sit in the room with him when he was on the ventilator. It just made me feel sick and my legs were wobbly and I was constantly shaking. Today's team is led by Dr Rachel Barber, who's worked in paediatric intensive care for the past eight years. So overnight we've had a reasonably good night, I gather, and his temperature's been a little bit more settled. Mm -hmm. Despite not having a diagnosis, she and the team appear to be winning the battle to save Reuben. OK, so for today... We should see if we can wean his ventilation a little bit and get him to do more spontaneous breathing. Put this into your chest, little man. Sorry. Right, oh, sorry, a little bit cold. Then, one minute. A bit more positive. We've been asking him questions. He's been nodding his head and things, or shaking his head. He knows when the doctors are coming over to listen to his chest and things. Ruben, sweetheart, I'm just going to wipe these lips. Hey. Goodbye. Doctors are still testing Ruben for every possible disease. Results-wise, everything, blood cultures were all negative yesterday, so we've still not grown anything, and his throat swab's also negative, so we're still none the wiser, I'm afraid, as to what's caused all of this. All of the infection markers are coming down, which is good, so even though we don't know what we're treating, things are, things are improving. Whilst we've not identified an absolute cause yet, the possibilities that are in the back of our mind are that this is probably or, or quite likely to be some sort of viral infection affecting his heart and that will cure itself in time hopefully. We, at least we know he's getting better slowly but he is getting better. I don't want to get my hopes up too much though because it can all change again. Can't it? With this sort of condition it could turn around in a space of a matter of uh, several days by which I'm probably meaning a weekish, maybe a bit more. It could also be several weeks before he, he actually improves and turns around. Um, and, and at this point in time, we're not 100% out of the woods. He could still deteriorate again at the moment. Paediatric A&E Professor Simon Carley looks at x-rays every day. He knows seven-year-old Oldham's swollen elbow is much worse than it first appears. Well, can I have a look at your pictures from today? All right. Okay, I'll get them up on the computer and we'll have a look. Have a seat on the big chair. Oldham fell down a flight of stairs and banged into a door. Now, this is your elbow here. This one here. And you see there's a little dot there? Yeah. It's in the wrong place. It's yeah. been pulled off. And that's where all the muscles that make your wrist go backwards and forwards and your fingers move, that's where they all come from. And if one fracture was not enough, see the little break on here? Yeah. You've broken a long bone that runs down here as well. And there's also, it's very difficult to see this one, but there's a little fracture on the radius, and that's the bone that allows you to do this movement. So I'm not going to ask you to do that because I think it'll be quite sore. You've only got three bones in your arm. You've broken all of them, which I think is pretty good game for a fall down the stairs. What do you think? You all right? OK. What this tells us is that the amount of force which has gone through that elbow at the point when it's been injured is high. It doesn't look much on the x-ray, but they actually represent what's quite a significant injury to the elbow, and that's why you don't want to miss these ones. Because of your age, and because it's not gone too far, it should just settle down of its own accord. We'll treat it with a plaster and everything should be fine. Mm -hmm. That's good news, isn't it? Altum's arm will be set in plaster for four to six weeks. All he needs to do is be a little bit more careful in future.
He's hyperactive and uh, he's uh, also uh, um, unlucky. On the kidney dialysis ward, Jack Norfolk and his mum Jenny are about to leave the eye clinic to see if he needs yet another operation. Come on, Jack, get your eye out. Excuse me. Things I do for you. He's got glaucoma in both eyes. This means the pressure can build up, damaging his sight. If you pressure your eye, it's supposed to be soft, but Jack's is quite solid. Um, it's the fluid at the back of the eye that builds up, and then you get um, headache and tummy ache. Quite uncomfortable for him. So we're just going along to see if the eye drops are working. If not, he'll have another eye procedure done. Yeah, are they just going to have a look? Yeah. And then I might be going in for an operation. I, I have a funny feeling that I will. Jack's dreading another op. He's had 22 over his seven years and it never gets any easier. Two months ago, when he went to surgery for his hip, he was terrified. <laughs> the last thing he wants today is to make another visit. I might be going to theatre, but I hope I don't. You won't. Think positive. Think that the eye drops have worked, then you might not. I'm scared when they put the oxygen mask on and when mummy goes. Because I go to sleep and I don't know what's happening. So which eye should we do first? That one? Right. Jack's first appointment is with optician Elizabeth Nicholl. No, no cheating. Ah, oh, that's cheating, isn't it? Can't do it. It doesn't matter. You just have a good try for me. Let's start from here. His eyesight's always been bad. If it's getting worse, it could be a sign that the glaucoma pressure is rising. Fantastic. Why? OK, good boy. Hey. You can't bring your chair near it. That's cheating. Are you ready? A V. OK, that's fine. That's great. Come on, Miss Finnerton, it's a long too. day, Jack. Have you? Next, Jack's seeing eye specialist Cecilia Fennerty. She specialises in glaucoma and operates on children with the condition every week. So how's this game going then, Jack? Because I need to have a little look at your eyes when you're ready. Today, she'll test Jack's eye pressure and decide if he needs the dreaded op. The prospect of another operation is making Jack incredibly anxious. He's doing everything he can to avoid the examination. All I'm doing is just having a little look at your eyes, isn't it? I'm going to be going to theatre. Why do you think that? Because we haven't been having my eye drops. You have had your eye drops. You've been a good boy. I don't think I'm going to hurt because I kept wiping them. Wiping them's okay. I tell you what, let's have a look at your eyes and see, shall we? Okay. Can you keep your eyes wide open? And looking at me. Good boy. Fabulous. Your pressure's good, Jack. Do we have to go to theatre? No. Yay! <laughs> hey, you're not going to theatre, we're not going right, to... Right, right, let's do your other arm. Oh. You just need to do your other arm. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was the worst eye last time, wasn't it? Yeah. Good boy. Is it all right? It's fine. Your pressure's um, good in both sides. Are we going good. to theatre then? No. <laughs> Yay! No, I'm going to theatre. Oh. Well, look. So do you think do you think we can just carry on with those drops? Are they all right? And I'll see you again soon. If I see you in about four weeks, is that okay? <coughs> That's great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Jack will need another checkup in a month, but for now, he just needs to keep taking the medicine. In intensive care, there's been some fantastic news for Reuben's mum, Nicola. Hi, it's Reuben's mum. During the night, doctors decided Reuben was well enough to be taken off ventilation and sedation. He's now awake for the first time in seven days and breathing on his own. I'm still in a bit of shock, really. I can't believe it after what he was like at the beginning of the week to, to now. It's just, I'm over, I am over the moon completely. He's doing so well. He's, Everything's been switched off. He's had the, uh, all the drugs for his heart turned off as well now. He's just on a feed and um, a bit of paracetamol and some fluid. Dr Kay Hawkins has worked in paediatric intensive care for 13 years. It's days like this that make her job worthwhile. 
Hello there, Ruben. How are you feeling? You feeling all right? Good boy. It's always fantastic when things go well. To see him make such a complete recovery is just, it's always very magical. When children become poorly, they can become critically ill very quickly, but thankfully, a high percentage of children turn themselves around with our help and get better very quickly too. But what caused Reuben's sudden illness is still a mystery. Just wish we knew what was wrong with yes, him in the I first know. place. It's not unknown for us not to find the cause no. of the illness, oh, frustrating okay. as that is. I guess there might be other things that come back from the lab as the days go by. And yeah, yeah which I've got my on. mind at rest of it now. I'm going to be a nervous wreck going home now, not knowing what's been wrong with him in case it happens again. I'm a nervous mum anyway when we're at home, so I'm going to be a wreck every time he sneezes and things, because we don't know what, what started it. A week later, Reuben's well enough to go back to his local hospital in Blackpool, where he'll be carefully monitored while he continues his recovery. To travel forward. Excited, we're going back to Blackpool. Aren't we? Exciting. <laughs> going back to Blackpool. Yeah. <laughs> Although tests were inconclusive, doctors believe Reuben had an infection which caused his heart to fail. Severe infection like Reuben's is rare. Unfortunately, the chances of it returning are incredibly slim. From the parents' point of view, I think it's absolutely terrifying actually. You've got to try and be honest with them and then try and be as reassuring as you possibly can when the child is safe. But I'm worried about the baby, I'm sure mum and dad are too. Megan's breathing is monitored while staff run through a battery of tests. First, they need to check for infection. Picking up an infection in a child of this age, they don't have a great deal of reserve.